In this problem, we have to find the interval and radius of convergence of this power series. We'll do this by using something called the ratio test. So the ratio test says that if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, one of three things will occur. So first, if the limit is less than 1, we'll have convergence. If the limit is greater than 1, we'll have divergence. And if the limit is equal to 1, we have no information. So in this case, uh, it's not n, it's k. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just cross this out really quickly and replace the n with the k. Most of the time, uh, in these problems, uh, it's n, but this one happens to have a k, so I'll just rewrite this and use k. Okay, so this is equal to the limit as k goes to infinity. Oh, and we're looking for the set of all x for which the uh, series converges. So what we'll do is when we take this limit, we'll force it to be less than 1 because we want convergence. Let's work out a sub k plus 1. That basically means we replace all of the k's with k plus 1's. So I'm going to write this up here. So I'll write it like this down here. 5x minus 1 to the k plus 1 over, and then on the bottom, we just have k plus 1 squared plus k plus 1. Good stuff. And then this is an absolute value. And then instead of uh, dividing, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So times, we'll just flip a sub k, right? This whole thing here is your a sub k. This is k squared plus k over, and then we have 5x uh, minus 1 to the k. All right, then some simplification um, should occur here. Let's focus on the 5x minus 1s. So we have 5x minus 1 to the k plus 1 up top, and then on the bottom we have 5x uh, minus 1 to the k. That comes from, from here and from, from here. And what we can do is we can break up the numerator. We can write it as 5x minus 1 to the k times, and then 5x minus 1 to the 1, all divided by 5x minus 1 to the k. And what happens is that these cancel, and so you just get 5x minus 1. So we will have a 5x minus 1. Let's go ahead and start rewriting uh, some of our limit. So this is the limit as k approaches infinity. We still have the absolute value, so all of that 5x stuff is just going to become 5x minus 1. And then we're left with, looks like, k squared plus k over, and then on the bottom we have uh, k plus 1 squared plus k plus 1. And you could do some stuff here, like you can pull out a k from this, and it'll become k times k plus 1, and then you can pull out k plus 1s from the bottom, and they'll cancel, but it's not really necessary. You can actually just take the limit now. So realize that the 5x minus 1 is independent of the k. So it's like you can treat it as a constant. It's not dependent on k. So what happens here is in the numerator, the leading coefficient, uh, or the term of highest degree, rather, is k squared. And its leading coefficient is 1. In the denominator, if you multiply all this out, it's also going to be k squared plus some other stuff. So the leading coefficient is also 1. So the degrees are the same, so the limit is the ratio of leading coefficients. So it's just 1 over 1, which is 1. So we're just left with the absolute value of 5x minus 1, because this entire limit here is, is just 1. And we want this to converge via the ratio test, so we purposely put a less than 1 here. We're trying to, to force convergence. We're trying to find out for what values of x does this series actually converge. When you drop the absolute value, you get 5x minus 1 less than 1, and this is greater than negative 1. And then to solve for x, we'll add 1 to all three sides. So we get 0 less than 5x less than 2. 
And to finish, we'll just divide by 5. So we have 0 less than x less than 2 fifths. Okay, so now we need to check the endpoints. I'm going to go ahead and, and rewrite our original problem here so we have it and so I can reference it. Uh, I believe it was the infinite sum as k runs from 1 to infinity. And I'm going to write it, uh, well, the same way it was written at the beginning. So k squared plus k, and then 5x minus 1 to the k. So this is the original question. So now we're going to check the endpoints. So let's start by checking 0. So check 0. So basically what this means is we take the number 0 and we plug it into our infinite series. If it converges, then we include the 0, so we use a bracket. Uh, if it diverges, uh, we use a parentheses, and then we do the same thing for two-fifths. So we have the infinite sum as k runs from 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared plus k. And then plugging in 0 here gives us 0 minus 1, so just minus 1 to the k. So this is an alternating series, so we can use the alternating series test. In the, in the alternating series test, the first thing you have to do is identify your a sub k. a sub k, or a sub n, a lot of times it's n, but a sub k is the non-alternating part. It's the part that doesn't have the negative 1 to the k. So in this case, it's just 1 over k squared plus k. Then you're supposed to verify two things. The first thing is that the limit is 0, and the second thing is that the sequence is non-increasing. Uh, Non-increasing means decreasing or staying the same. So let's take the limit to make sure that it actually is 0. So the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 over k squared plus k. So 1 is a constant, and all the k's in the bottom are getting bigger and bigger. This fraction is getting closer and closer to 0. So this is equal to 0, so that condition checks. The second condition is to somehow verify that this is a non-increasing uh, sequence. In other words, are the terms getting smaller and smaller and smaller? So I'm just going to say it is non-increasing. You can clearly see that as k gets bigger, uh, things get smaller, and they just keep getting smaller, right? It's not smaller or staying the same. They're not. It's not going up and then getting smaller. It's just down, down, down. You could uh, verify that it's not increasing by by doing something like this. You could say, hey, I'm going to let f of x be equal to 1 over x squared plus x, right? And then you can take the derivative of this and, and show it's negative, but I will omit that uh, in this problem. So because we have both conditions, it converges by the alternating series test. So in this case, we use a um, zero, uh, a bracket at the zeros. So there's, there's our first endpoint. If it had diverged, we'd use a parentheses. Let's check um, two-fifths. So check two-fifths. So checking two-fifths, we have the infinite sum. The original question was this, one to infinity, one over k squared plus k. And then we're going to plug in um, two-fifths up top. So let me show you. So when you do that, you get 5 times two-fifths minus 1, okay? So I'm going to write that down here. So you get 5 times two-fifths minus 1 to the k. Remember, it was 5x minus 1. Oh, look at that. These cancel. So you get 2 minus 1. So that's just going to be uh, 1 to the k. 1 to the k over k squared plus k, which is equal to the infinite sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared plus k. And now we have to determine uh, if this uh, converges or diverges. There's a couple ways of doing it. Um, you can use direct comparison or limit comparison. I'm going to use uh, direct comparison because it's faster. So in the direct comparison test, you want to compare this to something uh, that you think will converge or diverge. So if you just think about this intuitively, and you say, hey, wait a minute, when k is really big, you know, for big, big values of k, you know, this is approximately, you can just focus on the k squared when k is big. So this series should behave like a convergent p-series with p equals 2, which is bigger than 1, and that's why it converges. 
So you want to compare it to this. So what do you do? You write this down. And when you're showing convergence with direct comparison, here's a, here's a cheap trick. So in the direct comparison test, when you're creating your inequality, if you're showing convergence, you want to put a less than. If you're showing divergence, you want to put a greater than. Super cheap uh, technique. So we want to show convergence, so we put a less than. I'm going to put less than or equal to just for fun. Um, you can drop the k, and you can do that because k squared plus k is bigger than k squared. So this fraction on the left is 1 over a bigger number. That means it's a smaller number, so it's smaller. Now we explain why the sum of 1 over k squared converges. And this converges by the p-test since p equals 2, which is bigger than 1. So we showed that 1 over k squared plus k is less than or equal to 1 over k squared. And if you add up 1 over k squared, you get a convergent p-series. Therefore, by the direct comparison test, so thus by the direct comparison test, DCT, um, this sum, the sum as k runs from 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared plus k, converges. Okay, so that means we include a bracket at the two-fifths. So the final answer to this problem is bracket zero, comma, two-fifths bracket, because they both um, they both converge. So I did that kind of quick, and I did omit the uh, derivative here in the alternating series. That's mainly because uh, you know it's already been 12 minutes. Um, so very, very uh, nice problem, because you get to see uh, a lot of interesting things. I mentioned less than or equal to here, and um, here there's a less than. Less than or equal to does mean less than or equal to. So it just allows for equality. So whenever you're not sure, whenever you feel like, you know, maybe there might be an issue, feel free to use less than or equal to and greater than or equal to uh, when doing this test, just as a safety measure. The last part of this question wanted the radius of convergence. So let me go ahead and write down the original series one more time. I'm going to show you how to find uh, the center, and you can get it from this series. And this is not something that comes up a lot uh, in calculus classes sometimes. So this is going to be really clever, but I'm going to pull out a 5 from this. Watch this. I'm going to show you exactly why the center is what it is. So what you can do here is pull out a 5 and write it as 5 to the k, parentheses, x minus 1 fifth to the k. Okay, I skipped one step there. The step I skipped was this one. If you have 5x minus 1 to the k, when you pull out the 5, it's 5x minus 1 fifth to the k. And that's the same thing as 5 to the k, x minus 1 fifth to the k. Ridiculous, right? So you see that in general, for a power series centered at c, the form is this, a sub k times x minus c to the k. So this is your a sub k, and so that's a here, and then so your c is 1 fifth. So because the center is 1 fifth, that goes there, 2 fifths goes here, and 0 goes on the left. And then from this, you can see the radius graphically. right? So graphically, you see that the radius is 1 fifth. I like doing it this way because you can see uh, exactly how it works. You can also just look at it. Uh, you know, 0 to 2 fifths, what's in the middle? Oh, 1 fifth. That must be the center. OK, the radius is 1 fifth. So you don't really need to go through all of this. Also, if you take this and set it equal to 0, it will give you uh, the center as well. So a couple different ways to do it. I like to grind it out and make it match the form and then uh, draw a fancy picture. <laughs> I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who is studying some infinite series. Take care.